Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here today. I have a playthrough for Masters of the Universe, the board game Clash for Eternia, aka the He-Man game from Simon. This one is for one of five players in the Simon mold, where you got your minis and your dice and your big board and promising lots of adventure scenario base. This one is more along the lines of a big brawl between two factions. Who are those factions? Do you not know He-Man? Let me introduce you. You can play the villains that are led by the evil Skeletor. <laughs> Good will never defeat me. Or you can play the forces of good led by He-Man. And if you remember the 80s cartoon or some of the reiterations, you will know that somewhere along the way I'm going to be summoning Battle Cat. This one is a game where you level up along the way. I have my characters going to be playing He-Man, Man-at-Arms, and Tila in this solo playthrough all uh, together. I'm going to be playing these upgrade cards and trying to accomplish a scenario because I love the one-stop co-op shop audience so much and playing one of the longer scenarios, the Dungeon Delve. So I'll be going through this whole dungeon, getting this objective and trying to get out, and the enemy has to beat me. They are controlled by the AI. I'm playing one of the fully cooperative scenarios. There's also lots of one versus many scenarios available for this one as well. But before we get to all that, we have the YouTube channel, the YouTube stream channel. Please like the videos that you enjoy and make sure you're subscribed to both of those channels. We have our podcast, which is weekly design focus and game coverage, solo, co-op, new and old. Lots of coverage in your favorite podcast feed, the One Stop Co-op Shop. We have our Discord, which is a great community, open 24 hours, always talking about the latest, the greatest, and also some older favorites. Lots of coverage all around the world, a very welcoming community. If you want to join us, check the link in the show notes below. We would appreciate a contribution for our Patreon that helps us keep the games coming to the table and the tech upgraded. In exchange, you get exclusive access to videos and also channels in the Discord, which once again, if you just want to join our community, is totally free to join. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. First thing you do when you play a game of Masters of the Universe is to choose your scenario. There are tons of them to choose from, and if you get the Box of Power expansion, there's even more. So there are uh, plenty here. Most of them are one versus many, so just keep that in mind. Uh, you can either play open sided, where it you know you can swap out the e the evil people and the good ones. The set sides that kind of programs which faction uh, should be played. So like if you're doing a kidnapping scenario, you obviously uh, the good guys aren't going to be participating in that. Uh, so then you have your AI scenario, which is what we're going to be playing. Uh, so then there are four. The first two and the last two, I'm going to be playing Explore the Dungeon. Each scenario has the big board and then different ways to set up the tiles and the enemy spawn points, the minions and all that kind of thing. The major feature here are these ruin tiles, which sets up the dungeon. Uh, the only entrance to the dungeon is here and it's covered by a boulder and a lot of the entrances are covered by boulders. That's very important. That's how you progress the scenario is getting rid of those things. So then my character has to go all through here out here and then make it through this blast boulder to claim the objective and come back to the start point. So uh, as I said in the intro, this one will take a little bit longer, but I wanted to do it because uh, it gives a great a way to feature a lot of what this game has to offer. I have chosen to play a three player game. So my heroes are He-Man, Man-at-Arms and Tila. Generally, characters are very, very simple. They have one attack, which usually involves some kind of dice roll and range indicator. And then you have your special skills, uh, which require energy to fire off. So in general, just know that He-Man uh, is healing himself and being indomitable. Man-at-Arms lays down some extra attacks at range. And Tila is going to summon her guards. But whatever they're doing, they need the energy for it. That's what these cubes are. Energy will come in every single round of, by various means, and as they come in, you assign them to where you want them to go. So if you want to execute your base game power, you need energy in this bottom track, and then I'll be able to do what I need to do. 
the hero start off very simply, but then you have these upgrade cards. The upgrade cards are going to unlock as the game progresses in its escalation track. Uh, there are different ways to do it depending on different scenarios. Sometimes you kill uh, enemies or claim objectives. Here, you remove those boulders that I showed you. As you remove boulders, the escalation track will go up. When it hits green, then every character is going to be able to unlock their green skill. You get two choices, so you can mold your character depending on what is needed throughout the scenario. We get to yellow, same thing. We get to red, we get our ultimate attacks. And in this particular case, hoo -hoo, you know what's going to happen. It's happening. If I don't die first, that is. Same deal, as you're using powers, uh, you're using those energy, so the energy would have to be assigned to the particular slot. So managing that, that is a big part of uh, how to play this game well. Here are the enemies that I have chosen, Skeletor, Trapjaw, and Evil Lin. Whether you're playing with the controller as a human or as an AI, you always pick three characters and they control those three characters. And also, you have uh, some minions about, because minions are going to be frittered about the board, depending on the scenario. In general, uh, these operate a lot like their uh, regular side. You see that it says AI character right there. Uh, so then the cards, and I'll show those cards uh, when I'm ready to start the game, will trigger these actions. It'll say, uh, trigger Evil Lynn. Evil Lynn uses her action if she has her own energy, etc. This is the tracker board, which tracks both the round and the HP of the characters. The maximum HP that anybody could have is 10, which of course is He-Man. Uh, and it will go up and down depending on what is happening. So all six characters represented on this uh, HP track. It also tracks the AI's energy. In a human-controlled game, they would get the cubes and distribute them how they want. In the uh, AI game, they get kind of a collective uh, energy, and then the strategy uh, deck will spend that energy on different effects. So here is one of the most important things to remember about this game. It is called the balance of power. So important, in fact, the rule book actually tells you, this might be one of those important things to remember, friends. So pay careful attention. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. All right, so when any character spends their energy in order to do their boosted attack or some other kind of skill, the enemy gets that energy. Uh, so, He-Man will do his indomitable power, spend two energy, the AI would get that two energy, and that is how uh, the energy is preserved in the system, so to speak. It's called the balance of power. You would think that the enemy using energy would come to me? No. <laughs> so, I'm not sure why it's called the balance of power, but we'll take their word for it. And this last token here are the characters. The enemy's uh, victory goal is to kill me eight times. Killing isn't that bad, you just kind of respawn uh, where you are, especially in this scenario. But it does progress this track, and uh, that's a, a fate that I want to avoid, at least before I get that objective. Each round consists of eight turns. The heroes get four turns, and the controller gets four turns. That happens no matter what the player count is. So in my game, I have He-Man, Man-at-Arms, and Tila. I could switch these around if I want, but I'm going to begin the game that way. And then the last slot is in any character, so then they would be able to go uh, an extra time. If there was two players, you'd get two cards of activation. If there was one player, you would just get one character activating four times, and there's special rules to accommodate that. But I kind of like the fact that if you don't want to mess with a whole bunch of stuff, you can play this game with one player. So then you have four cards that are allocated for the controller. And the controller has one card for each of the three characters. And then one card is a quote unquote strategy that'll do some extra effect and also implement the minions. Whenever a character is set to go, the first thing they do is acquire that energy and allocate it as they wish. The earlier they go, the less the energy. But then if you really want to make something big happen, then operate that uh, final character. They get three energy to do their thing. All right, so let's just get into the first round of play. So as I go through this first round eight turns, hopefully most of the uh, mechanisms like combat and interacting will emerge. Uh, so uh, we have the four controller cards. I shuffled them and then put them uh, in the first, third, fifth, and seventh slot. There is no energy for the first activation. So let's see who it is. Skeletor. <laughs> I have Skeletor down here all the way at the bottom of the board on this uh, spawn point. 
and going to pull from the character activation deck. Once again, if this was the one verse many, uh, then they would have their own set of characters and deploy them like they would the heroes. But in this particular case, we're going to pull this card. And the way it works is that you're going to implement this twice, representing that the heroes get two actions on a turn, and so do each of the villains, uh, especially in the AI mode. All right. Reckless Onslaught. If there is an enemy in attack range, no. There will be an attack, but then if I can't do that, top part, I will go to the bottom. Otherwise, character moves four spaces towards the closest enemy, stopping if they enter attack range. This character suffers one wound. <laughs> and they do that twice. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Ow! I'm actually kind of glad that happened first. Uh, just kind of goes to show that the AI is powerful, but kind of dumb. <laughs> uh, just running into <laughs> the line of fire and about to get immolated. And it does give me the chance to demonstrate some attacking with He-Man, who is next. They are going to gain one energy. Uh, not going to be able to trigger Sword of Power right now, but I can attack the enemy. So then what He-Man is going to do, they're going to circle around, and I'll show you why I'm doing that in just a second. Uh, entering and leaving a space with an enemy next to it triggers a wound. They call that escape damage. So He-Man is going to instead use his nimble feet and dance around. Uh, anybody who knows He-Man knows that is a hilarious joke. Let's go ahead and swing our sword of power. Wow, what a good roll. There are only three possible faces on here. We have a range success, we have melee success, and we have castle grayskull. So melee success is pretty straightforward. Uh, they inflict a hit. This is awesome. Getting a castle grayskull inflicts a hit and gets the attacker one energy. So then that would be three hits down to three. And then I get one energy for my board, giving me two energy total. Good turn, He-Man. And that's it. That is the total turn. Turns are very simple. Your options are generally move, attack, interact. You get two options. That's it. Very straightforward. And so the next activation will be Trap Jaw. Uh, because they are on a space with one energy, they get one energy, and the character deck will tell me when I could spend the energy on their special attacks and skills. Speak of the devil, we have empowered skill. Before taking their first action, the character gains three energy. So they are up to four energy total. Let's go ahead and take a look at what they can do. Uh, they have their modular arm attack, which is a range attack. There you go, got that gun arm there. Uh, they can boost it by daze enemy. That's kind of what their shtick is. They're going to be laying down some daze. Daze is a simple effect. You lose your armor and you can move uh, slower. Two spaces, don't like that for this scenario. They can also uh, attack uh, boost if the enemy is adjacent to trap jaw. They suffer. They may suffer a three attack after this attack. Holy moly. So they are ready to lay down. And also, they can reconstruct by keeping themselves alive, basically, and empowered. So trap jaw is down here. And we go down the list. If a character has enough energy, they do. Uh, and if there's an enemy in a range, they don't. Go down. If there's an enemy in a range, if there's an enemy in attack range, there isn't. Go down. Character move two spaces. Generally, the AI deck will make the enemy move two spaces, and they will trigger that twice. So no wounding, <laughs> just attacking or moving. So um, I put He-Man on this space because that makes this path equidistant to this path. I want to keep this path clear because I want my other two characters to come down here and get into the dungeon. So let's go ahead and put them on a merry chase through here. Also, they pass this tile. This tile is a poison trap uh, that will inflict some damage, or at least attempt to inflict some damage, as this character passes. Too damage, too bad. Poor enemy, they're taking damage just by showing up. All right, next up it is Man at Arms' turn. Uh, Man at Arms is right there. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one, I can move through character, uh, friendly characters, okay. And then two, three cause an extra space of movement to move on top of the rocks and also an extra space of movement to root, move off the rocks. The benefit that I get is if I shoot and any shot is range four, Skeletor is perfectly arranged, that's fine. Any range is four. I'll illustrate that in a little bit. On the rocks, though, I get to roll an extra attack die. So then their laser rifle, which is normally three dice, is going to be four. And I have a decent enough chance to take out Skeletor right here. I just might do it. I don't. <laughs> I get one hit, 
which is okay for this scenario. When characters die, normally they would just return to their spawn spots, but in this scenario, they would spawn next to a boulder, which takes them closer to where I need to be in, in the way. So let's keep Skeletor alive for a little bit. The next character activation is going to be Evil Lynn. They are going to get two energy just like Man at Arms did. So Evil Lynn is going to charge. If the enemy is in attack range, no, they are not. Otherwise, character moves two spaces towards the closest enemy, stopping if they enter attack range. She's right here. She's going to move two spaces. Now, uh, this operates twice. If Man at Arms had ended their turn here, Every attack is for range, and Evelyn happens to have a pretty nasty bolt that comes out of her staff, and she could boost it. Uh, all sorts of bad stuff could happen. However, they are not there, so they're just going to move two more spaces. That is their turn. And so that is a part of the um, geometry of the game to make sure that you are set up in a place where you generally know what the enemies are going to do, making sure that they're the ones that show their ugly faces, and that you're able to counterattack. And so next up is Tila, a sixth of eight activations. She gets two energy. She is going to move over here. She's not going to go ahead and climb up on those uh, rocks. She wants to be able to get going pretty quickly. And she is going to spend one of her energy on Kaplan the Guard. Action spoil one or spawn one Royal Guard elite minion in an adjacent space. Ha 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 ha! I'm here, my liege! Where shall I attack? Elite minions tend to be awesome. They have two shields, so they're very hard to take down. But once you get past the shield, it only takes one hit point. That's why she gets summoned a bunch of them. And they have a reaction. When an ally within two spaces is attacked, move into the closest adjacent space. Then become the target of that attack. Yes, paladin style. That is why I'm going to nominate her, Tila, as the one that goes through and goes into and get the objective, she can defend herself really well with these Royal Guards. And so the next and the last activation, seven of eight in the turn total, they is the strategy deck, which is uh, generally governs the minions and does other things. So uh, there is a separate deck of strategy activation cards. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one. The order of operations for this phase is number one, activate all minions. So I don't have any minions. That's not gonna, uh, that won't be uh, too long. I'm gonna get some minions eventually. All right, then I activate this card and then I pull another card and activate that strategy activation as well. I should probably have noted this because of balance of power. Uh, when Tila used that one energy, then the AI gets that one energy. That's important because this card will call for the um, enemies to use energy. This card remains in play until the next controller activation, so it's gonna be an ongoing effect until the next turn. As they go, do not reshuffle the controller deck until the start of the next controller phase. Sure. Controller pays two energy. They cannot. They only have one. Controller pays two energy. They cannot. They only have one. Otherwise, all AA characters heal one and gain one energy. Evelyn is already at her max. Trapjaw and Skeletor each heal one. Trapjaw is rocking five energy. Not liking that. Skeletor only one. <laughs> I don't know what happens to their energy when they die and come back. I'm going to have to look that up. Doesn't say they lose all their energy, so I imagine they just keep it. And so the next strategy activation card is Ambush. This is why you want to be really careful uh, with that uh, giving of energy to the other player. Because if the controller pays five, they don't have five, move on. Controller pays three, they don't have three, move on. These are all attacks, I'll show them, I'm sure, later in the game. Uh, it's a small deck, these cards will come up uh, frequently. Finally, the player character, the lowest remaining HP, becomes dazed, then they suffer a three sword attack. That would be Man at Arms. They are dazed. They move two, and their armor is covered. So they're really sensitive right now. And that's bad because they're about to get a three damage attack in their face. Come on, Man at Arms. Protect thy face. Yes! All right, so we got range, range, and one damage. That one damage takes them down to five. That could have been much worse. And so any player character is going to activate last, and they are going to acquire three energy. That's going to be Man at Arms. Man at Arms is going to be full of energy. Uh, they have the two from before and then three now, giving them five total. There is the five energy. There is no use assigning uh, two empty skills. Uh, I'm a little bit bottled up for this first round. Eventually, I'm going to open up that boulder and get and open up those skills, be able to assign energy there. But for now, uh, I have to use the energy that I have on the main character sheet. 
And they're going to do what they do best, attack. So I'm going to go ahead and attack Evil Lin from this height. So I have four dice to attack. Not going to boost anything for now. That is one, a success. Their reaction, they could spend one energy in order to re-roll any attack dice. So we're going to go ahead and take these, try to get some more success. Reroll. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Three damage. Evelyn goes down from six to three. And let's go ahead and use rapid fire. I got plenty of energy for it. Perform one laser rifle action as a bonus action outside of my two. Got my four die again. So hopefully I can take out Evil Lin nice and early so that I can get past this. We got one, two. Oh, so close. So I was hoping to use that uh, that last action to shake the days. It takes one action to kind of get rid of days. Don't have that. I want to uh, use my last attack so that I can free up uh, this character for next activation and try to take them out. Come on. Plenty. Evil Lin is down. Evil Lin will respawn at the beginning of her next turn. So hopefully that is nice and late, giving me an open lane to be able to go at that dungeon entrance. And that's a full round of Masters of the Universe. It's not a complicated game. It's pretty simple. Uh, a lot of the complexity emerges from the tactics and uh, the interactions and stuff. But you got the basic idea. Let's rock. All right, new round. Got to remember, the AI has gotten three energy from all of Man-at-Arms shenanigans last turn. So now are at four total. Let's see who starts the round. It is Skeletor again. Skeletor again. <laughs> Havoc staff in your face. So they, uh, Skeletor has one energy. They are going to boost the energy. Uh, the rules say whenever an AI enemy attacks, it doesn't matter. They just use all their energy no matter what they got. So they're going to use that. And so when Havoc Staff lands, each wounded enemy by this attack will become dazed. Oh, He-Man. <laughs> going to have to get real lucky to not get dazed. Oh, no. They got one damage and one, uh, uh, two gray skulls, which is three damage total. And oh, by the way, I should have showed this. They used, uh, or the enemy pulled the attack and advantage, which is as basic as it gets. Par character performs one attack, and the enemy in a range with lowest HP, which is uh, the enemy right in front of them. Uh, so don't have to worry about the movement. And they do that attack twice. So they're going to load up again. They got two energy from that attack, so they are going to fire off their second um, boost, which is to heal one for each wound dealt, which would be real bad. So uh, they at three HP right now. So let's see how much more HP they get. Uh, they are going to get two more damage and heal two. So that brings He Man down from ten to five. Ouch! Oh, wow. That's why they ran up <laughs> and did their thing. I should have taken out Skeletor when I had a chance. Lesson learned. All right. So then Skeletor is going to heal two. So now they are even in the fight. He-Man is up. They are going to gain one energy. They're going to use two energy immediately, though. Uh, that goes to the AI. The AI is up to six energy right there. Uh, they're going to use Indomitable. Heal two. They're no fool. He-Man's job is to tank and stay alive. Uh, they, they are dazed. They don't have any armor. It wouldn't matter. Uh, but <laughs> meat shielded up, He-Man. Let's go ahead and throw down an attack. Hopefully, uh, Man-at-Arms will come in to mop up anything that I don't get. Uh, so that's nice. That's two damage, bringing Skeletor back down to three and one energy back for He-Man. That is their activation. Next up, we have the strategy card. This spells trouble for me. They're now up to seven energy. Getting ready to spend all that energy on. Not spending it quite yet. Drain power. If each player loses one energy, goes to the controller pool. They cannot. They suffer one wound to become dazed. Oh, that stinks. Flip another AI strategy activation card. So we're going to get a lot of those. Lose an energy, lose an energy, lose an energy. Boo, boo, boo. And that was fast. It <laughs> goes up to 10, and they can get extra energy if they so desire. So here's where they're going to spend all that energy. All right. So command, the controller pays three. They go down from 10 to 7. The AI character with the most energy takes one action, continue to the next effect. That is Trapjaw with five energy. They take one activation card. They don't uh, do it twice. They only do it once. Before taking their action, the character <laughs> gains three energy. Are you kidding me? 
Uh, so then they attack the, and then they, if they don't attack, they move. So they are, they got equidistant over here. So we're going to go ahead and move towards He-Man. And we continue with the strategy activation. The controller pays another three, bringing them down from seven to four. Same thing. So Trap Jaw is going to pull the next card on their character activation. Activate skill. If the, at, the character has enough energy to activate their skill, which they do. Uh, and there is an enemy in range. Their skill is to heal and gain energy, but there is no energy in range. So they are going to move on to the next effect. No enemy in range. Move two spaces. Closing in. So then the controller pays another two. They go down from four to two. So that was a nice drain on their energy, trying to conserve what I give them. Uh, the AI character with the most energy moves two spaces. They do not attack. Uh, so they don't pull an activation. They just move. So then the, they just happen to get a free bunch of movement towards He-Man. They are in trouble. And the AI character with the lowest remaining HP heals two and gains two energy. Man! That is nasty. That would be Skeletor, and they gain two energy, bringing them up to two. And that was the effect with the gain power. Flip another AI strategy activation card. So uh, they play two cards. So they had, that was a double card for their first play. Now they're going to play the last card of their deck. They only have five cards in the strategy activation deck, so you didn't see them a lot of times. Let's do it again. All right, controller pays five. They don't have five. Controller pays three. They don't have three. Controller pays two. Spawn one minion on each spawn point. Woo-hoo! So let's spend two, bringing them down to zero, which is nice. So we got minions right over here. Uh, there are scenarios where that matters more. So that can pretty much pass this, although they will be here when, I'm, when I get out uh, in the way of the um, get, getting back there uh, to my starting spawn point. Uh, but they are going to activate each time I pull one of them strategy cards. But for now, they're just going to be there chilling. And holy moly, that was the entire uh, one activation for the strategy phase for the bot. All right, next up is Tila. Uh, Tila is the first character that will get the two energy. Uh, they sucked out all the energy because of that effect. So that brings her to two total. And she is going to get trucking. So she goes one, two, three for her first move. So entering this space, once per activation, a model entering that space will trigger this attack, which is a two um, whatever die attack, but ha ha ha, why I summon them, where I summon them, reaction, when an ally within two spaces attacked, move into the closest adjacent space to become the target of that attack, closest adjacent space to who, where, let's say right there, <laughs> because it is closest to that one, that makes total sense, my lady, go, and go and hit that boulder, I will defend you against this dastardly plant, uh, the plant has a small chance to get through the armor. Let's see if they do. They do not. Ha ha ha! Two shield. I said a small chance because uh, they get a plus one success for each of the uh, gray skulls they roll. So they could theoretically roll a gray skull and a hit and get through the armor, but that didn't happen. So the minions have already gone. She's going to make a break for it and do it again. One, two, three. So, mm, yeah, let's see, they're going to end over here. Could they end over there? That's okay, whatever. Anyway, so reactions are not once per turn. They are once per trigger. So the trigger was here. They couldn't like react twice or anything. But because this plant is going to attack, ha, 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 <laughs> let's put them here. And they are going to absorb that attack again. Milady, pew, 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 pew. I will protect you. Watch for my little shenanigan over there. It's going to go down. No. <laughs> my paladin is on the case. So my apologies. I'm retconning something, but it didn't really affect anything for now. Uh, Indomitable is a bonus action. Bonus actions are the only uh, actions that cannot be triggered uh, multiple times in an activation. Everything else can, just uh, depends on the trigger. The bonus action is independent of their move. I did not go with the second uh, attack with He-Man. Of course, you know what He-Man's going to do. Skeletor was right there. So he's going to lay down the smack on Skeletor. <laughs> so then that brings them down to two. And with the two gray skulls, they have two energy. All right, so the next go is Trapjaw. Uh, so Chop Jaw is nasty. Uh, because that strategy card put them right next to He-Man, they're going to do two attacks, and they're going to use their boosted attacks and do that twice. So they're going to boost uh, by dazing He-Man. He-Man's already dazed, doesn't care. This one's bad. The enemy is adjacent to Trap Jaw, which they are. 
they suffer a three um, axe attack. So it's like shoot and then punch after this attack. So it's going to go bam, 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 bam. So that's going to be 12 total dice on seven hit points. Not loving my chances. That's if they pull the attack card. Let's see what they do. Attack in advance. Yep. They're going to do that twice. So ranged attack. One hit. He-Man down to six. Now it's time for that sword arm attack. Sword arm attack. One, two, three. <laughs> uh, so He-Man is down from six to three. And uh, Trap Jaw gains an energy. Uh, they just have a ton of energy. So uh, now they're going to do that again. So then this is the range attack. Range attack hits for one. He-Man is down to two. Needs a miracle to stay up. Come on now. Let's go. Uh, but this is with the um, sword arm for Trapjaw. Oh, He-Man goes down. A terrible twist of luck. They're going to get KO'd and they are one eighth of the way to victory. The bot is at least. Special rule of the scenario for the player characters. Normally, you'd kill them and then have to respawn at the spawn spot. Here, they're going to get up at the spot. It takes me an action to get up. So I do have to sacrifice an action to do that. But at least, I'm where I want to be. So that was Trapjaw. It is now a man at arm's turn. That is a, a turn that I triggered. Uh, they are going to get two energy. Uh, they are going to spend one action to remove the daze. And they are going to skedaddle. <laughs> I don't get anything out of beating these guys. It just They're just here for distraction. Uh, and I kind of want to keep them alive out here and let them putter around so that they're not in the ruins. So let's go ahead. Have to spend an extra action to get off the rock. And then another action moves me here. That is Man at Arms turn. You know that they're not going to be there for long. Next up is Evil Lynn. She is back. Uh, for the last enemy activation of the round, they respawn right next to a boulder, according to the scenario-specific rules. So let's go ahead and, well, there you go, to make that official. And show the enemy activation. Activate skill! Wow. Uh, if the character has enough energy to activate their skills, there's enemy in range, which they do. And this one is devastating. Mind control. Spend three energy, they have three energy. Push the enemy with the least energy four spaces towards their closest ally. Then the enemy performs one attack action on their ally using that attack that can cause the most wounds. So this is very interesting because that would be pushing Tila, which would be devastating. But the guard says that when they are attacked, not when they suffer some kind of thing that is labeled attack, but when they are attacked. It's a little interesting corner case. I have a feeling that I might be pushing it a little bit, but it is too thematic not to do this. And so the guard is going to say, no, you shall not penetrate the mind of the lady. I will take the blow. Woo -hoo -hoo! So then they get pushed back four spaces and they attack man at arms. And this is a three die attack. Uh, that is going to be two successes. They can't gain energy. Man at arms blocks one and they are down to four. Once again, I'm not exactly sure if I had to push Teela if it could have been the minion. I'm invoking rule of cool on that one. That was totally fun. Evil Lynn gets a second activation, like they all do. So they don't have enough energy to do their skill again. They're at zero. Uh, so they perform one attack on the enemy at range with the lowest HP. That happens to be Tila, who doesn't have anything to guard her. And that is a four die range attack. So then that is going to be three successes. Ow! And one energy for Evil Lynn. That's going to knock Tila down to five because uh, she has the one armor. So I have one activation left, that's by any character, and it's by my first big decision of the game. Uh, He-Man is there, he's down, uh, and if he, if I uh, don't get him up, then the other two characters are just going to like rush past them and negate the advantage that I got. But, uh, I'm going to roll the dice a little bit, I have a 2 and 4 chance of one of them not activating. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up Tila. Tila is going to get 3 energy. She is going to use two energy this turn. I've given the AI two energy. She has, uh, or the AI has two total. All right, so this is what she's going to do. She is going to use her one action to spawn one Royal Guard Elite of Indian in an adjacent space. So that is going to be her second and final Elite Guard minion. She has both on the field. 
she is going to use her bonus action to activate all Royal Guard Elite minions within four spaces. The other character got pushed. They're within four spaces, so she's going to activate them both. Activation means move and attack, and they move uh, with, like, just like regular characters, uh, three spaces. So this character is going to move. They're going to risk uh, getting hit by this thing. So let's go ahead and roll. And like, they should not get it. <laughs> uh, this is going to be really bad if they uh, get taken down by this thing. Oh, oh, that was an extra success. But this one's a miss. Two shield, uh, two damage against the Zona, two shield. I'm safe. This one also has to do the same roll because they're triggering this plant over here. And same roll. Look at that. They get past it. And now they're ready to execute their attacks on both these characters. So uh, their attack is Halberd or Power Halberd, three dice in melee. So let's go ahead and try to take that one out right there. Uh, overcomes their shield. So every minion has one shield and one health. Once you overcome the shield, they're easy to kill. And we have taken one minion out. And let's go ahead and let's give Evil Lin a love tap. Right there, we got two damage. I'll take it. Evil Lin is down from six to four. And the last one, I don't love this option, but we're going to go ahead and move this character here, which triggers the plant again, but I have the, the, the guard there, which is why I wanted to spend that action to summon the guard. The guard will absorb that to attack. Uh, they are doing a great job. <laughs> They are the MVPs so far. All right, so I have shuffled and re-dealt. I'm still at one escalation, which is very upsetting to me. Got to get to that boulder. I'm close. Nothing is <laughs> healthy. Everything is battered and bruised pretty good. Let's go ahead and see what I get for the controller card. It is the strategy phase, which is a mixed blessing. Uh, well, you saw how it could activate other things. So uh, hopefully it doesn't activate the two uh, characters back here that I want to stay back there. It is summon minions. Uh, good. They don't get their uh, summon and activate powers. Uh, so they only pay the two. So first of all, before I do the strategy card, I probably should have done this before then, they move. Uh, towards the nearest characters. So this one's going to move one, two, three. They're going to make their way up to He-Man. This one's going to move one, two. Let's see if they get taken out by the plant, which would be truly hilarious. They do. <laughs> oh, that is lovely. <laughs> uh, we are clearing the field of minions. All right, so they spent their two energy. Uh, so now I can do the card effect, and they are going to spawn three more. Just so you know, there are eight total minions in the... A pile. Uh, you cannot summon past eight. So right now, uh, there are one, two, three, four on the field. So they'll be able to summon a few more. But once they're at the maximum, that's it. The second card they get is Empower, but the AI has zero energy. So all AI characters heal one and gain one energy. Not great news. So Skeletor consistently hovering <laughs> near death, uh, but they're okay. And Trapjaw had been hit by one, but they, so they are going to put, get put back to eight. It is now He-Man's go. They have uh, the first slot, so they're going to get one energy, which brings them up to four. Uh, for their action, they're going to get up, and I've been thinking about this. Uh, it does me no good to just sit there and wail on them. Uh, so I, and if I don't, I'm not going to be able to kill them in one shot, so they're just going to get the two attacks on me, so I'm just going to go ahead and withdraw. So that does deal me damage. So I go down from 10 to 8, but I'm going to use the Indomitable skill, which uses two energy to put the uh, to put to give the AI two energy, but at least I'm back at 10 hit points. So that's a little bit of a confusing turn, but just know that I'm here with full hit points. Uh, they have to chase me a little bit. Uh, I'm, I only move that far because I'm dazed. I can't move three, uh, but I'm going to let them, I'm uh, going to kite them a little bit, see if I can slow them down that way. And it is now Skeletor's turn. Let's see what Skeletor does. Come back here! You shall never escape from the evil that I can wield at you from my staff! Southern Recovery. Before taking their actions, character heals two. That's no good. Skeletor goes from three to five. <laughs> Skeletor is not going to die anytime soon. That's terrible. If there is no enemy in attack range, character performs one attack. So, uh... Skeletor does not have a range attack, so they are going to uh, go ahead and move forward. And oh, by the way, they have one energy. They're up to three. So then they do the thing twice. 
Uh, so uh, they are going to take that. Well, this is their, before their first action, so that's fine. Uh, but they now they have a, a character in attack range, and they are going to attack. It is going to be boosted. The boosted, uh, so that means that the, they would daze He-Man. Uh, so He-Man's already dazed. That's fine. Go ahead and waste your energy. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, the, the game does say if the, if the character's already dazed, they don't spend the energy. So they keep that. Uh, so then, uh, take my word for it. Um, Skeletor has three energy. They go down to one. So then they're going to attack for each heal a wound dealt, they are going to heal one. So <laughs> I'm not making a lot of progress here. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I'm uh, doing the best that I can over here. Ow! That is four hits. That really couldn't be worse. That brings He-Man down from 10 to 6. Skeletor is up to 8 again. They are at full hit points. And they roll two Gray Skulls, so they get two energy. They're back up to 3. Ugh, that might not have been the best thing that I could have done with that turn. The overall idea, though, is that I'm sacrificing He-Man. Uh, they can die a couple of times. <laughs> As, as terrible as that sounds, uh, in order for me to make progress, get Man-at-Arms and Tila into the dungeon. So Man-at-Arms is next. Uh, they get two energy. They are at their full complement of five. So then the, for their first action, they're going to move. One, two, three. They have to deal with this um, plant over here, but they have a shield. So let's see if they are able to move through. No, they take a damage. So just FYI, I could have moved Man at Arm. Well, the, the attack triggered here. I could have used the action to move the character here to take the hit. It doesn't have to be Tila, it could be anybody. But that would have denied me the ability to be here. So I had to take the damage. I took a risk. That's the way this game goes. And so the attack is going to be on Evil Lynn. She has to die. I'm rolling three, uh, which is a range attack, which is bad, but he has ways to buff it. He is at full energy. I'm going to use it. Okay, so we got one hit. I'm going to go ahead and spend the energy. Uh, the AI now has three because of the balance of power. We're going to go ahead and roll that. That's pretty big. Yes! <laughs> so I get that one energy back. Uh, Evil Lynn is down. So the next character up is Evil Lynn. See if she goes before I take her out. Uh, I should be able to take her out next time. It's two. I'm going to go ahead and pull the last character activation card from the deck before I reshuffle. Characters move two spaces towards the closest enemy. Uh, or this character. Well, they're right there. Spawn two minions adjacent to that character. Interesting. They, there's no room. This is impassable. I believe the boulder space is impassable as well, and there's nothing left adjacent. I don't know if the rule is that they, uh, they, they spawn out here, but I think this is kind of a thing that you can do. Uh, they do not spawn any minions. I'm going to declare that. I don't know if that's an official rule, but rule of cool, baby. <laughs> they're cornered. They're not, they're not spawning anybody. Uh, so just going to put a flag that I don't know what uh, exactly they're going to do. All right, flip another action card for this character, but only resolve it one time. So they get this one action and then another action, uh, but the one pull. She's down to, uh, she has three energy. That's what she started the turn with. She's down to two because she's going to attack boost. For each wound dealt, the enemy loses one. For each um, energy they cannot lose, they suffer a wound. All right, so at least uh, this is the lower percentage play, which is the range dice. Perfect. <laughs> wow, I needed that. All right, so now Tila is going to go. She's on the two energy space. She got two energy. She has that full, the five energy that she has at her character card. Finally, let's get uh, this boulder going so I can get uh, leveled. First of all, bonus action. Let's go ahead and attack with my two Royal Guardsmen, my MVP so far. So let's go ahead and get that one out of the way. Uh, that is to miss. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. They roll an extra die on that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so they, yep, they're going to um, keep that one alive. That's a shame. Uh, now, the, this one, this is big. I need to deal two damage on these three dice. Please deal two damage that will take out Evil Lin. Please. Yes. All right. No armor over there. Two damage. Thank goodness Evil Lin is out for this round. So that was important because I needed the guard to kill them because I'm going to have Tila move one. That does trigger entering or leaving the plant, which is going to get taken out by the guard. The guard lives. Excellent. 
So now the boulder says characters may spend one energy and one action. Imagine spending that energy goes to the AI. So let's go ahead and do that. The AI now has five. So they have the action to remove an adjacent boulder. They may then perform the following bonus range attack. Wait a minute, I got ahead of myself. It's actually the closest corner. Has to be matchup. The closest corner goes going through that lake. Wait a minute, I could be, I should be able to throw a boulder over a lake, right? It's impassable, it doesn't block line of sight. I'm throwing it, there you go. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw this boulder. How many uh, swords? Actually, it's not swords, it's range. So let's go ahead and get that range going. One, two, overcomes the armor, does the damage, bam! Taking out that uh, character. Which means that finally I get my escalation and I get my choice of skills. He-Man has a choice. They could either do charge, perform a move action, then an attack action, or throw, push enemies wounded by the attack up to two spaces, uh, and so um, and then make them attack each other. It looks like as a tank, making the characters attack each other is great. I don't know that they're going to be doing much movement. He-Man is right there. Man at Arms has a choice: either a grenade, target one space within four. And the attack hits all enemies within two spaces. It is a four attack and it pushes versus stun beam. I get to suck the energy out of them. Oh, man. Uh, I think I am going to go with the grenade. Uh, man, because they, they also dazes them. Dazes slow, daze slows them down. Uh, but the grenade is just so good in the push. Ugh. Let's go with grenade. Grenade's fun. And Tila, let's see, Tila gets the whirlwind. This attack may be used on enemies of the two spaces away. So a little bit of a range attack or a rally for each. Uh, Tila may use his booth on herself or an ally. For each wound dealt, heal one. I think that's no brainer. I need more healing. All right, so the seventh activation of the round is going to go to Trapjaw, the only uh, villain that has not activated this turn. They are going to pull their character activation and do it twice. Before taking their first action, character heals too. Sweet, they already healed. Uh, if there's an enemy in range, perform one attack. There is. Trap draw has that gun arm. And line of sight is closest corner to closest corner. I'm going to say yes, why not? Uh, so they are going to attack over here and then they're going to get their gun arm uh, two times. Uh, that is two successes. Uh, so He-Man is going to go down to four. <laughs> they could go down again. And Trap Jaw is back up to five energy uh, with the energy they got from the beginning and rolling that. And let's see what else happens. Another two damage. The <laughs> man is down from four to two. So uh, he would have been using his attacks, but He Man is already dazed, which is why I'm not bothering to undaze He Man. He's right there. So, last character activation of the round is going to be Tila. Tila has the three energy. And now, as you can see, it could start putting energy into the side. Uh, little effects over here. Uh, rally is not going to happen this turn, but she is going to spend her one energy uh, to go over here, uh, which goes to the balance of power. As you can see, <laughs> heroes and villains not doing great there. Going to reposition my royal elite guards. We're going to go one, two, three. We're going to give some coverage to poor He Man over there. Now they're in range to protect He Man, but they are going to get the attack from the plant. Let's see what happens. Uh, nothing. That's fantastic. This elite guard is also going to move over here. Uh, reason being that the evil Lin is going to show up somewhere. And if I do manage to kill one, uh, one of those guys, they're going to show up too. So let's go ahead and roll for this again. <laughs> uh, the plants have nothing uh, for these guards over there. So she is going to move one, two, three, and then one. And then next turn, we're going to get rid of that boulder and continue to progress on our little adventure here. All right, once again, uh, current state of play. This time I'm going to have Tila go first. She needs least energy and just going with her is good. Uh, but first, the controller goes. Evil Lynn is back. She spawns next to a boulder in the most inconvenient spot for our hero. And let's see what she does. She is going to do Reckless Onslaught. Character performs one attack on the enemy in range with lowest HP, which will be uh, Tila. Uh, rolls maximum attack dice and gains all attack boosts and surges without spending uh, energy. So uh, she's going to do her Dark Magic Blast 
uh, with the attack boost, which would drain me of my energy for free. Normally, she would have to spend one per, so she has three energy right now. Uh, so that would bring her down to one. Not with this card. She stays at three. Character must suffer one wound for each miss roll, and she does this twice. Oh, that's great. So she's going for broke, but she might uh, take herself out of the fight again, uh, which would be fantastic. Let's see what happens. All right, so first attack, it is one hit, uh, which is uh, blocked by Tila's shield, and she takes three wounds. Oh my god, for the miss. That's amazing. There is a chance on this next attack she will KO herself, so uh, she does the attack twice. Uh, what is going to happen? She uh, hits twice, and she's going to bring herself down to one HP and give herself one energy. Uh, and she does one little damage to me and costs me an energy. So that was a lot going on. The state of play is that Tila is down to three energy. Uh, Evil Lynn had three, so she's going to get to four. But that was grievous because all those misses, uh, five damage total, bring her down to one. That's so good. And so now it is Tila's activation. She gets one energy, which she's going to spend immediately to get rid of this boulder. That gets the escalation up one. Don't worry about that, though. I haven't opened the yellow power yet. As part of that boulder, a second cool move. I get to do the boulder toss. You know who that's going to. There's no armor. I only need to roll one success in order to get there. I rolled more than that. <laughs> yes! That is so fantastic. I love that. So she gets two magic, uh, two energy, I should say, uh, out of the deal. Uh, we're going to go one, two, three, and then work on these boulders. Once I get rid of this boulder, I'll be able to uncover that yellow skill. Oh, man. Evil Lynn is coming back, so I'm thinking that should I... Yes, I will. I will activate the guard. But I'm actually going to send them this way. They'll die, and then on a future turn, I could respawn new guards next to me. So we're going to go one, two, three. They're going to uh, see. I've been tempting fate over here. <laughs> it's a low chance, but they could die. Uh, that is still not death. Does not get past their two armor. MVP right there. Next up is the strategy activation. First thing that happens in that phase is we move the minions. Uh, actually, where does this one move? Uh, wow, they have a long way to go to get anywhere. Uh, so, huh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Okay, so they're just going to go towards he -Man, So that's exactly where I want them to go. Uh, and this one is going to do the same thing. <laughs> just move on up there. Uh, don't want to bother with you. And this last mini is not going to fall into this jet trap. They're going to fall into this one. Because <laughs> Man at Arms is right there. Let's see if they survive. They do not. The plant once again chomps down the minion. I love that. All right. So this is an annoying card. Ambush. Uh, the AI has the five energy. I'm not going to show this every time, but I have been showing you a little bit. I'm going to go down from six to one. They pay the five energy. All player characters become dazed. <laughs> And then each player character suffers a four sword attack. So Man at Arms and Tila are dazed. Uh, He-Man, <laughs> he's just going to spend the entire battle dazed. Let's go ahead and do the attack on He-Man first. Four swords, or four dice, three hits. That would take He-Man out. But this is why the guard is here. The guard is going to violently come in and go, Oh, no! <laughs> For my master, no! MVP, MVP. MVP. I can resummon those anytime I want to with Tila. Let's go ahead and do the same for Man at Arms, who does not have the same grace. Uh, that is going to be three hits. That brings uh, poor Man at Arms down to one. And the AI does not get the energy from the castle. They only get it when the, when the heroes spend their energy. Tila has no guardsmen around them. They are going to suffer. Uh, that was two misses, one hit, and one uh, other kind of hit. So it's just a two damage or two hits total. And so here's the benefit of barely doing anything, letting the, these guys here to full. Command is the second card. Uh, they don't have the energy, so it goes all the way to the bottom. The AI character with the lowest remaining HP. They're both at full, gills two, and gains two energy. All right, it is He-Man's go. Uh, they are going to gain two energy and use that energy immediately. To go from two to four with Indomitable, which gives two energy to the AI. Uh, he took that two. Uh, he did give himself one energy, so I'm going to spend that energy so the AI is now up to four. Uh, he put that energy on throw. 
So he's going to take <laughs> or attempt to take Skeletor by the lapel and toss him up a little bit. So then uh, push enemies wounded by this attack up the two spaces. If that enemy ends adjacent to another enemy, uh, which why not? I'll do that. So both of those energies that I got from the activation will go into throw because I want to do both of those things, which gives the AI up to five. And which means that He-Man has zero energy. <laughs> That's too bad. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw Skeletor into Trapjaw. So that's one, two, three. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Three damage and an energy, a valuable energy, back to He-Man. So what throw does? Throw pushes Skeletor back in He-Man. Since he is still dazed, he can only move two. He's going to move back here, which is fine by me. Makes that much, it makes it that much more harder for the enemies to get He-Man doing his job, baby. Boy, howdy doing the job. Exact attack in advance. So then uh, we are going to take Skeletor and go one, two. They don't have a range power, so they go one, two. That is their whole activation. <laughs> I love it. I don't love it. Why are you tormenting me? Let me kill you. Next up is Bandit Arms. Uh, they have the two energy slot. They're going to put both of their energy into grenade. The main card is full of energy. I love that. I was kind of hoping I would clump up Skeletor and Trapjaw. Didn't happen. That's fine. So let's go ahead and take one pot shot at Skeletor, who has five health. Uh, this is not going to be boosted in any way. Uh, let's see. We got... Oh! -ho -ho! <laughs> that is wasted energy, unfortunately. Uh, but I love it. I do three damage. I take Skeletor down to two, and as you guys have figured out, I would want to try to keep Skeletor alive and right here and let Tila just have a free run as much as possible through the dungeon. And so to that end, let's go ahead and move poor dazed um, man-at-arms back next to the plant. Let's see if the, uh, what you will call it, the guard is necessary for defense. It is not. So uh, the, I'm able to guard against the plant. I'm loving the tactics here. All right, it is Trap Jaws Go. Uh, they would gain the two energy, but uh, looking at the rules, so it says that it generally everything works the same, whether it's AI or human. Uh, in the basic game, they have the limit of five on their character card. I think that that same limit applies here. Again, uh, I don't know, so I'm flagging it for the rules. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play with that. I'm gonna play that they have a limit of five energy. Uh, so it doesn't really matter in Trapjaw's case because he is just awash in stuff. So he is going to continue to do what he does. But first of all, let's go ahead and check the character activation card. Character move. Oh, summon reinforcements. Oh, no. Character move two spaces towards the closest enemy, stopping if they enter attack range. They do not. Yes, they do, actually. They, they're in attack range because he's a ranged character. Spawn two minions adjacent to this character. All right. So we have the little bots, Hoover bots right there, but they're in the bottleneck. <laughs> You're not going nowhere. They immediately activate. So this one will move right there. This one has nowhere to go. Uh, so they're just going to get stuck and uh, hit nothing. This one does attack He-Man. Let's see what they do. They roll two dice. And they get two hits. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that brings He-Man down to two. They don't get energy. And then flip another action card for this character, but only resolve it one time. Uh, so let's see what we got. We got the character has enough to activate their skill and enemies in range. They activate their skill. Trap draw skill is pretty support-tastic. Uh, they are going to gain the two energy, which I'm not sure if they do. I'll check the rules on that. They do heal two. That uh, damage from the throw is negated. The trap draw is at full health. The extra activation is going to go to Tila. She is full on energy, but I want to get this out of the way and get me to the yellow skill. So let's move over here. Let's move the block. There's nobody to throw the block at. That costs me an energy, which gives the AI an energy up to six. I could theoretically say I'm throwing this at the wall, roll, and try to get the energy from the dice, but that would be munchkin <laughs> and cheating. We're not doing that. Instead, we are doing this escalation number three. We get our yellow skills. All right. Complimenting throw is, is deflect. Probably going to be that because he's tanking. Roll three dice. So this is a defense bonus. 
Uh, so that would be against that any attacker. I believe kind of a reaction. And then we also have Earth Shatter. Target one space. Within two spaces of He-Man, this attack hits all enemies. Uh, so a, a burst attack. I think I already have that with um, Man-at-Arms. Uh, yeah. And then I could throw out some Daze. Eh, I already kind of have something similar. So I'm going to go ahead and do some Deflect because they are meat shielding. And I know I screwed this up. Uh, I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't have done grenade first because uh, that's a yellow skill. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and just give myself the green thing. I didn't use grenade anyway, so not that much cheating. Overwatch reaction: When an enemy ends a move action and performs an attack within four spaces of man at arms, perform one attack on that enemy. So ooh, nice. Uh, that's coverage, baby. And a tactical reposition: Push man at arms or one ally. Well, then four spaces in three spaces may ignore terrain penalties. Oh, oh, nice. A tactical reposition. Let's try that. So um, attacks are nice, but repositioning, uh, getting He-Man where I need him to be. Let's do that. And last but not least, Hela. Offensive stance, Tesla's attacks, bro, plus one die. That's pretty nice. Defensive stats, gain one shield. And defensive boost for each missed attacker suffers one wound. Uh, considering she is all on her lonesome. Uh, let's go ahead and do the defensive stance. So she has healing and defensive. You can tell what kind of player I am in general. Uh, <laughs> I tend to the defensive stuff kind of outlast the opponent. It's worked for me so far. I also have to remember that they're dazed. So uh, at some point, we're going to have to shake that daze. All right, so current state of play, not pretty. <laughs> man at arms at one hit point. Uh, He-Man at two hit points. Uh, oh, they, they should be, uh, Evil Lynn should be knocked out. Sorry about that. Uh, and we have Tila at four. Well, that's not so bad. Uh, and but L Trap Jaws at eight. Uh, I am at the uh, yellow escalation working on that red. Let's go ahead and check out the controller. The tr controller is Trap Jaw. All right, so it is Trap Jaws go. Uh, they are going to, to attack He-Man twice with the uh, attack in advance they just pulled. So then uh, the perfect outcome for me would be to uh, for Trap Jaw to not hit He-Man uh, or not, not take them out, but to take them out on the second hit uh, so that when He-Man goes, they'll rise up at 10. And He-Man is going next. That's what I had planned. All right, so that is one hit. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Perfect. Uh, so that is going to bring He-Man down to one. And let's see if, uh, yeah, I think, they, they, come on, you, you're, you're a slob. There you go. Uh, boom, done. You are down. He-Man is down to the knockout. That brings the uh, enemy victory up one. But He-Man goes. They get an uh, one uh, energy. And they spend one action to stand up, and they are now at 10. Hoorah! All right, so He-Man is back up in the fight. I'm not going to attack Skeletor because they, they still have to go this round. They would respawn next to this boulder. No thank you. you got to protect Evil in at all costs. So let's go ahead and attack the minion instead. One, two, three. That wipes him out. Hoping to get some energy out of that. Can't have everything. All right, so now let's go ahead and do a tactical withdrawal. One, two, three. When they enter this space, they're going to get attacked by the plant. And this is full damage. Actually, wait a minute. They're dazed. <laughs> so they can only move that far. They take two damage. Boo. The next up is the strategy phase for the controller. These things are hopeless. <laughs> but I think they know where they're going. Uh, oh, boy. This guy is just <laughs> what a mess right there. Uh, that, I do have this controller, though, or this minion. One, two, three, and they are going to attack He-Man. All right, let's see. They don't gain any energy, but they do hit him for one uh, and miss one. All right, AI activation card. I knew this one was coming. It was the last card on the deck. Each player, character loses one energy. It goes to the controller pool, so they are going to go from six to nine. And He-Man is going to lose an energy. Man-at-Arms and Tila all going to lose energy. Uh, and they are becoming dazed, but they're already dazed. <laughs> so now I am safe to undaze them because this card might not show up for a little while. Or maybe it will because, uh, man, that's a lot of dazing. Uh, so then the next card gets pulled. And remember, we're going to pull this card and then another strategy card. All right. Come in. Controller pays three, which they can. The AI character with the most energy takes one action. And then they keep going. The AI right now has nine. They go down to six. 
and that would be Trapjaw eternally has tons of energy. Uh, they are going to gain three energy. <laughs> oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. Uh, but then they attack. Uh, are they in range of anything? No. Trapjaw moves one space. Wow. Uh, bot using that bottleneck to my advantage. That is perfect because they are going to go down from six to three. The AI is. Lockjaw is still not in range, but they are going to close the gap. <laughs> Mike Lake a nice little conga line, uh, aka grenade uh, cluster, which is great. So then it keeps going. Uh, they pay two, so the AI is down from three to one, and that's the benefit of making this conga line. The AI with the most energy, which is Trapjaw, moves two spaces, does not activate, moves two spaces, uh, and then continue to the next effect. Fantastic. Uh, and then the last effect is AI character with the lowest remaining HP heals two, engage two energy. That is Skeletor. Uh, Skeletor goes up from two to four, as in two to four healing and a two to four energy. So that wasn't too bad, was it? Wait a minute. I have to pull another one of these things. It is summon minions. Uh, so we have we they can't pay because they already spend all that AI, all that energy on the last one. Spawn one minion on each spawn point, then spawn one minion adjacent to the player's character with the lowest HP. That's Man at Arms, definitely. She has one, uh, he has one HP, and then activate it. That's not too super awesome. So let's go ahead and put uh, minions right there. Sorry about that. Everybody's getting stuck together. Uh, bam, and then a separate spawn next to Man at Arms. It says adjacent, doesn't say uh, specify that it has to be a safe place. So they spawn here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Uh, spawn is that movement? I don't know. Rule of cool anyway. Let's go ahead and roll that. They miss. <laughs> I deserve that. So let's go ahead and try to take out Man at Arms, which is totally possible to do. Uh, they are going to do one damage, which I have not been doing this. Man at Arms is dazed. That means they don't have armor, which would, which would go through. I, I apologize for that. Uh, I probably should have done a little bit more damage to my heroes. I won't forget that next time. But I have the uh, guard over here. They are going to move and absorb it. It's only one hit. Uh, so they have the two armor. Bam. Man-at-Arms is saved. So Tila is dazed. She is going to end her turn using both of her actions to move next to the boulder. Tila got that two energy and she put them into defensive stance as a reminder. She is going to gain another uh, shield uh, and get that, uh, ooh, that's a little bit of reprisal damage. Uh, but I, uh, let's see if I could uh, get Evil Lynn to fall into that trap. Next one is Skeletor, which is hilarious. <laughs> I can't. Ah, <laughs> why? Why? Why are you using your tactics against me? All right, charge. Uh, if the enemy is in attack range before one attack, they're not. Otherwise, character moves two spaces. So this is not impassable terrain. This is actually forest. Uh, the way it goes is that if the character is in this space, they have one plus one shield, you know, kind of hiding out. But it's an extra space to let her and leave, which is why I haven't taken advantage of it. Skeletor has no choice. <laughs> I can't believe I have to go to the forest to get you good guys. No! And because they did that, they have to do it again so that this time they are going to <laughs> use two of their two spoofs to exit the forest. Then they can go around, but that killed Skeletor's whole turn. I love it. It is Man at Arms' turn, who is here. So they are going to get two energy and they're going to spend it immediately. So the AI does go from one to three, but we're going to fire off Grenade. Yes. Target one space within four spaces of man-at-arms. The attack hits all enemies within two spaces of that targeted space. So we're going to do the effect, and we're going to do the boost. After the attack, push all enemies up to two spaces. All right. So let's go ahead and attack right there. That's going to get you, you, and you. So that's one roll, which is going to cover everybody. And it's a four-die attack. So hopefully, unless this is a terrible roll, the, at least the two minions will die. And I'll get Skeletor, too. Okay, I'll take it. So we got the one energy back that's going to go back into the grenade. And we got overcame the armor. So we got two minions down. Skeletor gets hit. They go down from four to two. And most importantly, they're pushed back two spaces. <laughs> no! 
all! I want to get in range of you! I must kill you and taste your blood! Last but not least, Evil Lynn. Okay, so I'm going to have to have the uh, commenters. I know a lot of people who watch the playthroughs don't make it this far, but whoever is, uh, let me know if I'm being too munchkinly. Okay, rules as written. When characters reappear, they reappear next to a boulder. It has to be adjacent to a boulder. So they are going to reappear right here. This is impassable. You cannot uh, pass through this. Uh, you have to lift it and go. I don't see a way for AI characters to lift this up. So now let's read the text of Boulder. Uh, so then characters may spend one energy and one action to remove an ancient uh, an adjacent boulder. The name it perform the following bonus range attack. So uh, using this action would be an interact action. According to rules as written, the enemies cannot use interact actions. They just, they go off of their uh, character card. So I'm going to rule that they are over here, but they can't affect me. <laughs> Which is why I limped over here to cover that uh, right there. So again, rule of cool. I, I <laughs> outsmarted the bot, which is exactly what you're supposed to do with a bot. Uh, and if people are going to call shenanigans on me, then they can go ahead and call shenanigans. Instead, uh, let's see, Evelyn is going to uh, cast Empowered Skill before taking their first action. Character gains three energy. They have enough energy to activate their skill. They activate it. So then uh, they would they would activate the skill, which is that Mind Blast thing, but you can't Mind Blast through a, through a boulder. Neener, neener, neener. Character performs one attack. Character moves two spaces. They can't do any of that stuff. They do it twice. Ugh. <laughs> I feel dirty with that rules is written, but at the same time, that munchkinry is glorious and feels very in tune with the spirit of this game. So now, Tila goes as the last action of the round. Uh, she fills up, which means I have husbanded her energy so thoroughly that all of her uh, energy is full. If only He-Man were so lucky. Let's go ahead and use one action to summon one Royal Guardsman. You knew that was coming. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and use an action to lift this boulder, uh, spend that energy. The AI also gets that uh, and toss it at Evil Lynn. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and go uh, one, two, three, four. See how bad this is for her. Uh, and we got one energy back and one damage. Evil Lynn is down from six to four. And now let's do this as an action. Here we go. Uh, let's go ahead and summon that guy right there. And why not? I will spend the extra energy. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to spend the ener extra energy. The bot has enough. I'll save it. Uh, that is Tila's turn. All right, back to the top of the round. Here is Skeletor, which is very exciting for me because he's all over there. <laughs> ah, 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 here is. You must take up my slack, minions! Go get the heroes! Unless they get the Reckless Rush card, which it is not. Attack in advance. So then, otherwise the character moves two spaces. Do do that twice. Two spaces, two spaces. Ha <laughs> ha 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 ha! Ho ho ho! You shall never defeat the forces of good, Skeletor! That's what you think! Oh! This plant! What are you doing here? Oh! Skeletor is down to one hit point. Oh, I actually kind of want to keep Skeletor alive because uh, otherwise they would spawn. Actually, wait a minute. Skeletor went. They aren't going to respawn in this turn and they might take a while for the next turn. So it might be time to take Tele Skeletor out. All right, so now it is Man at Arms turn. They're going to get one energy, put it into grenade. All right, so we are going to launch a grenade. So wording of this text, again, rules is written. Uh, target one space within four of man at arms. This attack hits all enemies within two spaces of the targeted space. All enemies. So apparently they can throw a grenade at He-Man's feet, not hit anybody there, but hit the enemies. We're going to go with it. It's a cartoon. All right. So we are going to roll. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. We have uh, two successes, one Castle Grayskull, which gets uh, energy back on grenade. That's going to be spammed by you. Uh, so that is enough to overcome the armor of these minions. That's great. That uh, p hits Trapjaw for two. He goes down from eight to six. And because I boosted it, 
trap jaw gets pushed. So that helps him. Uh, it's still not uh, out of range for He-Man, but it gives He-Man a little bit more breathing room to deal with that. So a Skeletor dies. Wow. Uh, so I, I have a round to get over there and provide some support or else um, Eve, uh, Tila is going to get overwhelmed. No! No! Hero! And the next thing Man-at-Arms is going to do is finally get rid of his days. On the move next turn. Next up is Trapjaw. Let's see what they do for their action. Reckless Onslaught. There's an enemy in attack range. There is. Within four. Uh, I think that it would be optimal if Trapjaw moved ahead and engaged and got their extra attack. But the rules as written say you do from top to bottom. If they can attack, they can attack. So that's what Trapjaw is going to do. Really, Trapjaw is super nerfed, <laughs> in my opinion, by the way he is implemented in the AI. His skill isn't that exciting. I don't know. We'll see what happens. If, then he's going to take out He-Man and we'll see what happens. All right. So then the attack happens uh, to He-Man. Uh, so that's the lowest range. There's only one person in, in range. Uh, gains maximum attack dice, attack boost, and surge without spending any energy. So uh, they have that daze attached to them. He-Man's already dazed. He is forever dazed. Oh, this is bad. The character must suffer one wound for each misroll. They do that twice. All right. So, four dice. They hit He-Man twice for five, but Trapjaw also gets hit. He down from six to four. Let's do it again. Ow! I'm being reckless. Oh, no. Okay. So, He-Man takes two damage so does trap jaw and so that was pretty vicious but costly for the enemy so trap jaw was at six they went down to two he man was at seven they went down to three everything is clustered in this lower level we're starting to get to the nitty-gritty over here oh look at that speaking of the devil he man is next he gets two energy but he's immediately going to spend it on indomitable will which heals him too and bumps the ai up two energy as well so He-Man is going to provide some backup. Now that Skeletor is dead, we have he, we know that he had disappeared into the cave. I'll get you, Skeletor. I know you're going to come back. As soon as they enter this square, the plant attacks. Let's see what the plant does. Uh, Diz deals out one wound. Aha! The guard is here. <laughs> they respond, and they take it. They did not die because they only suffer one damage. He-Man is safe. So then we're going to go one, two, three. Uh, theoretically, this would trigger, uh, but the, the plant could only attack one model per activation. So while the getting's good, run right through. Next up is Evil Lin in the depths of the um, ruins. Sorry, I put them here. Uh, I'd move them here because that's much more advantageous for me. Still legal placement. So uh, sorry about that change, but I'll have noted that in the rules. There you go, Evil Lin. All right, let's check it out. Attack in advance. Doesn't get more basic than that. Character performs one attack on the enemy in range with the lowest HP which is going to be the palace guard. The palace guard is going to perish. Uh, I mean, I think they would attack this one anyway, and the palace guard takes it, whatever. I'm not sure. Let's just do it. This is a boosted attack. So uh, as they deal out wounds, they're also going to drain energy as well. But this one's definitely going to go to the palace guard. Hopefully they live. They do not live. Oh, oh I did my best. You did great. You have nothing to apologize for. It's just you and me, Tila, the only two women in this entire universe facing off for the fate of everything. Let's go. Whiff! <laughs> That's what you get for talking your smack. I'm going to come back and you see. And so check this out. Defensive stance, uh, defensive boost spent to energy, which she has. She has plenty. Uh, for each miss, the attacker suffers one wound. <laughs> Does that work at range? It doesn't say it, does it? Of course, it just says reading it rules is written. Boom! <laughs> she thought she was going to launch her attacks. She's at four hit points. Oh, four misses! <laughs> Good for you, Evelyn. I am so sad that I do not get buffed from that, but that is truly amazing. I do give the AI two energy, so I guess that's just the ultimate trade-off of all these things. Uh, they cost energy, they buff the, uh, the enemy, but some really wacky effects are happening, and I'm here for it. Amazing. 
and the next turn is Tila's. Uh, she gets two energy, but she's going to refill a defensive stance with. <laughs> oh man, this card is sweet. Love it. And uh, as a bonus action, I can flip the skill over and do the offensive version, which rolls extra dice. And then that just lets me flip offense, defense. Man, Tila is awesome. She is still dazed, actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and undaze her. And I'm going to use an energy, which brings the AI up to 10, uh, to summon a guard. So the guard is going to come here, probably next turn, get them going, and uh, get rid of that boulder. All right, uh, the next is the strategy phase. Strategy phase opens with the minions moving, so there's only one place where they can go. <laughs> come on, take them out, take them out, take them out. That doesn't take them out. That's a shame. And the minion also moves this way. Wow, man at arms is man at arms might have to fall back at some point. Let's see what happens. So the minion attacks uh, right here. They are going to instead attack this one. So this one is in danger actually. So it's a two. Uh, that's two shield. But the power of the hover robot says for each castle rolled, roll one die. Additional dice cannot generate more dice. So it's tiny explosion, not a huge one. But this could take out the guard. Finally. Wah, 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 wah. I died bravely, I hope. You did well, son. You did well. I mixed up the figures. You did well, son. You did well. So I should have known this was coming. This was a tactical uh, blunder by me. I try to remember this because I know what's coming in the strategy activation deck. Uh, the controller pays five. They have ten, so they're definitely going to pay the five. Uh, so then, all player characters become dazed. I uh, just undid the daze. Let's put that back. So I have to be keep that in mind for the future. Then each player character suffers a four weapon attack. Boo! All right, this is certainly enough to take out Man at Arms. Man at Arms has one hit point. It would be a miracle if they survive. They don't survive. Ugh! The enemy now has three kills to their name. He-Man is at four. They could theoretically survive this. They do. So they go down from four to two. Sorry about that. Tokens covering the numbers. Uh, He-Man actually goes down from five to three. And the Ghost the Ghost is attacking Tila, but they have the Royal Guard there, which is really nice. Uh, that is two damage. The Royal Guard intercedes, absorbs that two damage with their shield. Nothing happens to Tila. Fantastic. All right, so the next card is going to have them spend four on Empower, which is going to remain in play until the next controller activation. They pay two, they pay two, uh, so that every character is going to get plus one attack die and plus one shield. So I have to remember that. Uh, and all AI characters are going to heal one and gain one energy. So that's only Trapjaw. Trapjaw is uh, actually Skeletor and Evil Lynn are both down. Uh, so I should probably put them in KO. <laughs> it's a bloodbath over there. Uh, Trapjaw does heal one. Uh, nobody else does. And then uh, they gain one. Okay. Trap Jaw is at his eternal max, and he has basically been taken out of the fight. So <laughs> I'm not really sure uh, what that's going to be all about, but that's fine. Last player character activates. It's actually going to be He-Man. He-Man is the only one that's really hurting for energy because I haven't... He spends it every turn. So then they are going to get the three. Two in uh, the main character, one in Deflect. Uh, so then they are going to shake off their days and they're going to move three to start providing some backup because Tila is going to need it. All right. So now we have the strategy phase, which I'm really happy this came up nice and early. I delayed Man at Arms' turn to the end because I don't want to give them a target. Right now, they're just there. <laughs> so they move. That's the first thing to happen. So this one is going to try to move and get taken out. <laughs> This one is going to get try to move and get taken out. This one is going to try to move. Oh my God. I love that. <laughs> I think that, I mean, they gave that out on purpose. Like they, they didn't want a bunch of minions kind of going around over here. Uh, the plants are there to harry everybody. So the minions are dumb and they die. That's the function of them. That is so fun. Let's see if the AI summons more minions. Drain power. Each pa a character loses one energy. So as you see, I haven't been uh, very, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, liberal with the energy except for with He-Man, so I can absorb that. Uh, no new dazes, that's okay. The AI does get three energy, though. 
If they cannot, they suffer one wound, become dazed, don't worry about that. Flip another AI strategy activation card so I get two more of these things. Summon minions. Controller pays five, they cannot. Controller pays three, they can. Summon one minion on each spawn point, they immediately activate. <laughs> oh, you are going to regret taking that energy from me, pal. So let's see. We got one, two, three. And at least two of them, not this one, uh, but two of them are going to face the wrath of the plant. Let's see if the plants can go five for five. They're three for three so far. Yep, four for four. Oh. <laughs> ah, I'm going to take that chocolate up to my excellent tactical play, leaving man at arms dead and sucking them all into the plants. Love it. And I'm glad to get this one out of the way. Ambush. So the AI only has one energy, so we go straight to the bottom. Uh, so the player character with the lowest remaining HP becomes dazed. That's Tila. Tila's already dazed. Then they suffer a three-weapon attack with their guard next to them. So the guard absorbs the hit. They live! They live! <gasps> My leech, why do you keep on putting me in such danger? That's your job! You keep doing that! Okay. He-Man's turn is next. They're going to replace that one energy that they lost. Uh, on, on their main character card, and they're just going to move. One, two, three, four, five. They are not dazed and ready to rumble for when Evelyn and Skeletor come back. Which she does. Evelyn spawns next to the boulder. Right in the thick of the fray. What was that? Did I really take myself out with my own staff? I better be more careful next time. So let's go ahead and move them uh, into... Well, hold on a second. I'm just moving them for nothing. That's not how they move. They check the character activation. Sudden recovery. Before their first action, character heals too. Fantastic. They are already at full from having respawned. If there's an enemy in attack range, they attack. Otherwise, they move two spaces into attack range right there. So that happens twice. So now they are going to attack. They are going to spend their one energy on their dark magic bolt, theoretically targeting them. But here comes the guard. The guard, this one just showed up, so they are probably not long for this world. But, as you saw, there are fewer ranged successes, so there is a chance that this one might live. They live! They live! <laughs> I love it! That's so fantastic! They live! Alright, so it is Teela's go. She gets two energy. Uh, she is at full for everything. She's going to sweep around and save some room for He-Man and try to take her out with a basic attack. Uh, not really using every one of her energy. Hmm. I will use one energy, though. Uh, that'll give the AI one up to two. And I'm going to flip this to offensive stance. So I get to roll plus one attack die. And then if I want to, I can re-roll. So that's a nice little option. Let's take her out as best we can. One, two, three, four. I get that energy back. Uh, uh, Evil Lin is down from six to two. He-Man, finish him off. Or if I want to. I can, hmm, sorry about that, Tila was dazed, I couldn't do that. But the good news is, I get a bonus action, activate all Royal Guard elite minions within four spaces. Let's do that, AI goes from two to three energy. Uh, I spend one energy on my board, can't get that one back, because they are going to move in and they're going to try to take out Evil Lin. So they have a three attack, but that is not unreasonable odds to expect that I'm going to get two successes out of this roll. Come on. Two successes. Ah, yes! <laughs> Evil Lynn is down as soon as she showed up. That's fantastic. Guess who's up next? Trapjaw, who is stuck in the middle of no man's land. So let's just make this official. Uh, if the character has enough to activate their skill, they activate it. Uh, so they actually do activate it, uh, which uh, they spend two of their energy and they heal to, which is actually pretty important. They go up from three to five. All right. Uh, does not say you keep on going, so it just you just do that again. <laughs> so they stay where they are. They're not gonna move, uh, because it does not say move on uh, to the next one. So it's just activating their skill. So they're just gonna do that twice. They're gonna spend uh four of uh, four total energy. They're left with one. They're gonna heal from three to seven. So they just took a healing turn. Ah, that could have been uh, a lot worse for me. Man at arms gets up. Fantastic. Uh, they are going to, well, she gets up. He has to get action to get up. So it's not going to, his turn's not going to be too exciting. Uh, going to get two energy from the start of that turn. We're going to load that grenade. It is now at maximum. 
And just to let you know, that is what Man at Arms is working with. So they uh, have the three energy on their character card and then everything else is full. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of these. Uh, so I, yeah, let's just do that. And you know what? Let's not get rid of these. <laughs> and instead move. Uh, try to establish a corridor of death over here. Grenade time uh, when it is time to escape. But they do have to deal with this plant over here. Uh, so they just got up their day, so they don't have any armor. Wow! <laughs> good thing they didn't roll that versus the enemies having some good life luck, baby. So this is a little annoying because uh, we're just going to get spawn, spawn, spawn near these um, uh, rocks. So they're just going to keep on coming back and back. Here is Skeletor. Uh, and I don't get any uh, I don't get any good stuff for killing them. It's just uh, kind of getting in the way. Anyway, here comes me! 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 Skeletor activates their skill. So Skeletor's skill... Master of Evil. Spend three energy. The ally with the most energy performs one bonus action. So that would be... Because uh, it, it, it's emphasized ally. Evil is not around. So we're going to go ahead and activate Trap Jaw. So Trap Jaw is probably going to get extra movement out of this. So this is only one. Character moves two spaces. Stopping if they enter attack range. Spawn two minions adjacent to that character. So then one, two. And then... We have two minions. Uh, do Does the spawn equal a movement? Rule of cool. I'm going to say yes. Uh, <laughs> giveth and taketh away. The, the plant does not attack the minion. And the next one, uh, because they don't have enough to do their skill again. Does the enemy attack in range? They perform one attack. Otherwise, they move two spaces. So, pretty weak sauce from Skeletor, but they are doing the thing of delaying me. Any character goes, would love it to be He-Man, it has to be Tila. Tila gets one energy, puts her at full. So, we're going to take out Skeletor as best we can. She is in offensive stance, she rolls four dice. It is possible to take out Skeletor, who has eight HP in one go. Alright, before we attack, we're going to do Rally. Tila may use this boost in herself or any ally within four spaces. For each wound dealt, heal one. The AI is going to go from three to five, but I've spent my two energy off of Rally. All right, let's see what happens. Yes! All right, we replace the two energy on Rally. Uh, she gains four hit points. She goes from three to seven, which is her max, and she deals four damage to Skeletor, which is the max. That's outstanding. She has another attack. <laughs> she, she, Skeletor is just going to show up and then die. I love the sound of that. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, so uh, she does need to rally again. She can reroll. Hmm. That's what offensive stance is. Offensive stance is after rolling attack die, reroll any dice. I think it's just better to take the bonus action and activate the guard. So let's go ahead and activate the guard and have to do two damage in order to get through this. But that's not bad odds, is it? One, two, three. Oh, why is goodness so powerful and light and caring and lovely? Hopefully not too many shenanigans so I can get to the last boulder and get my last power up. All right, new round. I really needed this card to have not been Evelyn or Skeletor to keep my path clear in the dungeon. Got lucky. It is Trapjaw. So Trapjaw is going to activate the character, Empowered Attack. Before taking their first action, character gains three energy. Trap Jaw was down <laughs> and has a target that, oh, you're already dazed and you've been dazed. That's too bad. Uh, so uh, the enemy in attack range, they perform one attack, otherwise they move. So they are just going to move two and do their four uh, range attack for three dice. This would daze, but I don't have the daze up. And as you see, it's a total whiff. Trap Jaw is sad. <laughs> Tila is going to start the festivities for this round. She gets one energy and puts up to full of every single skill. She is going to move up to and she is going to shake her days. Man, days just takes a lot of action economy out of my hands. All right, next up is me. I'm getting tired of spawning and getting killed. Am I going to live past one round this time? Oh, no. Spawns right next to a boulder, is going to unleash two attacks uh, right in uh, Tila's face and powered skill. Before taking their first action, character gains three. The character has enough energy to activate their skill. 
and there is an enemy in range. So a little bit of a weird one because there is an enemy in range. Uh, Skeletor's skill is to activate an ally, which would be Trapjaw. Rules as written, there is an enemy in range of Skeletor, but they uh, use their skill. So what they're going to do is they are going to empower and have Trapjaw activate. Which is a thing, which is a thing. Uh, so then they are going to attack and reroll any misses as a part of charge. That is one action. So they do their weenie attack. Uh, they don't reroll anything. So they get three. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, this is a hit. These are misses. This is a range attack. So they are going to get two hits and one energy. Trap draws at full energy. Man at arm, still dazed, goes down from six to four. So then do that again. Uh, they can't empower the skill, so you can, uh, because they've spent that energy. They're down to two. And then, if there's an enemy in attack range, they perform one attack. So they're going to attack Tila. Going to spend the one energy to empower the staff. Enemies wounded by this attack become dazed. Uh, doesn't need to heal. So uh, they're going to just use that four die attack on Tila. Let's do it! One, two... Uh, all right, so Tila is right now undazed, but I luckily I remembered to have swapped a defensive stance. I get one shield, Tila has one shield, two damage is not going to wound her, therefore, not going to daze her. Fantastic! It is He Man's go. He Man is tired of being in the back of the line. They get two energy, which they are going to put in one into throw and one onto their main sheet, and they are going to get in boulder throwing. Uh, position. The next one who activates, got a little bit of unlucky there, is Evil Lynn. Uh, I will show you how. I'm tired of this too. I'm tired of this too. He-Man, what are you doing here? All right. They will use Reckless Onslaught. Okay. So this is the one where they attack and they wound themselves. Uh, I had reshuffled the character decks. You're going to see the same cards. So you know what? That whole bunch of, that whole thing of like they spawn behind the bold and they can't attack. Uh, I'm not going to play with that. We're going to go rule of cool over here. So uh, what Evil Lynn is going to do is Evil Lynn is going to throw the boulder. Why not? It's very it's simple enough to resolve. So instead of doing their attack, uh, they're going to do the attack as the boulder. Why not? So then they pick up the boulder and they throw it at He-Man. <laughs> rule of cool. I am not sure what the exact ruling is on this scenario because, you know, as you know, with a lot of games, a lot of scenarios, corner cases, uh, very difficult to measure all those rules. However, let's just do it. Uh, okay, so they're going to throw at He-Man. It is a four attack, and we're going to apply the penalty that if they um, miss, they will wound themselves. Because why not? It's a heavy boulder. Uh, don't scratch your nails. Uh, so then they are going to do two damage to He-Man, bringing He-Man down from three to one. That's not good. And also themselves. So she starts off at six, and she brings herself down to four. This could kill her. 